In today's video, we're going to be looking at more Llama 2. This time, we're going to be looking at a very simple version of retrieval augmented generation using the 13 billion parameter Llama 2 model, which we're going to quantize and actually fit that onto a single T4 GPU, which is included within the free tier of Colab, so anyone can actually run this. It should be pretty fun. Let's jump straight into the code. So to get started, this notebook, there'll be a link to this at the top of the video right now. The first thing that you will have to do if you haven't already is actually re request access to Llama 2, which you can do via a form. If you need some guidance on that, there'll be a link to another video of mine, the previous Llama 2 video, where I describe how to go through that and get access. So. First thing we're going to want to do after getting your access is we want to go to change runtime type and you want to make sure that you're using GPU for hardware accelerator and T4 for your GPU type. If you have Colab Pro, you can use one of these and it will run a lot faster, but T4 is, is good enough. Cool. So we just pip install everything we need. Okay, and once that is ready, we come down to here. So the hung face embedding pipeline. So before we dive into the embedding pipeline, maybe what I should do is kind of explain a little bit of what this retrieval augmented generation thing is and why it's so important. So a problem that we have with LLMs is that they don't have access to the outside world. The only knowledge contained within them is knowledge that they learned during training, which can be super limiting. So in this example here, uh, this was a little while ago, I asked GPT-4 how to use the LLM chain and line chain. Okay, so line chain being the sort of new um, LLM framework. And the answer it gave me specified this line chain, which is a blockchain based decentralized AI language model, which is like completely wrong. Basically it hallucinated. And the reason for that is that GPT-4 just didn't know anything about line chain. And that's because it didn't have access to the outside world. It just had knowledge, it's called parametric knowledge, this knowledge stored within the model itself that it gained during training. So the idea behind retrieval augmented generation is that you give your LLM access to the outside world. And the way that we do it, at least in this example, is we're going to give it access to the outside world, like our subset of the outside world, not the entire outside world, and we're going to do that by searching with natural language, uh, which is ideal when it comes to our LLM because our LLM works with natural language. So we interact with LLM using natural language and then we search with natural language. And what that will allow us to do is we'll ask a question, we'll get relevant information about that question from you know, somewhere else and we get to feed that relevant information plus our original question back into the LLM, giving it access, okay? So this is what we would call source knowledge rather than parametric knowledge. Now, part of this is that embedding model, okay? So the embedding model is how we build this retrieval system. It's how we translate human readable text into machine readable vectors. Okay, and we need machine readable vectors in order to perform a search and to perform it based on semantic meaning rather than like traditional search, which would be more on keywords. So in the spirit of going with open source or open access models as is the case with Llama 2, we're going to use a open source model. So we're gonna use the sentence transformers library. If you've been watching my videos for a while, this will be kind of like a flashback to a little while ago. So we use sentence tra transformers a lot before the whole like open AI chat GPT thing uh, kicked off. Now this model here is a very small model, super easy to run. You can run it on CPU. Okay. Like let's have a look at how much RAM I just used. Okay. At the moment it seems like we're not really even using any. So I think we, it may need to wait until we actually create, start creating embeddings. Uh, which we do next. So you can see that we're using the CUDA device. Here we're going to create some embeddings. Okay, you see that we're using some GPU RAM now, but very little, 0 0.9 gigabytes, which is nothing. But that's pretty cool. So what we've done here is we've created these two 
documents or chunks of text, we embed them using our embedding model. So if I just come up to here, the way that we've initialized our sentence transformer is a little different to how I used to do it. So we've essentially initialized it through hugging face, and then we have actually loaded that into the Langchain hugging face embeddings object. Okay, so we're using hugging face via Langchain to use sentence transformers. So there's a few abstractions there, but this will make things a lot easier for us later on. Okay, cool. And let's onto this. So we have loaded our embedding model. We have two document embeddings. That's because we have two documents here. And each of those has a dimensionality of 384. Now with OpenAI, for comparison, we're going to be embedding to a dimensionality of like 1,500 and like 36, I think it is. So with this, you can like, particularly with Pinecone, the vector database we're going to be talking about later, you can fit in like five of these for every one OpenAI embedding. The performance is, you know, less with these, to be honest, but it kind of depends on your use case. A lot of the time you don't need the performance that OpenAI embeddings gives you. Like in this example, it actually works really well with this very small model. So that's pretty useful. Now, yeah, let's move on to the pinecone bit. So when we're going to create our vector database and build our vector index. So to do that, we're gonna need a free pinecone API key. So I'm gonna click on this link here. That's gonna take us to here, app.pinecone.io. I'm gonna come over to my default project, zoom in a little bit here, and go to API keys, right? And we need the environment here, so US West One GCP, remember that, or for you, is this environment will be different, so whatever environment you have next to your API key, remember that, and then just copy your API key. Come back over to here, you're gonna put in your API key here, and you're also gonna put in that environment or the, the cloud region, so it was US West one GCP for me. Okay, and I initialize that with my API key. And now we move on to the next cell. So in this next cell, we're going to initialize the index, basically just create uh, where we're gonna store all of our vectors that we create with that embedding model. There are a few items here. So dimension, this needs to match the dimensionality of your embedding model. We already found ours before. So it's just three, eight, four. So we feed that into there. And then the metric, metrics can change depending on your embedding model. With OpenAI's R002, you're gonna be using, you can use either cosine or dot product. With open source models, it varies a bit more. Sometimes you have to use cosine, sometimes you have to use dot product, sometimes you have to use Euclidean, although that one is a little less common. So it's worth just checking. You can usually find in the model cards on Hugging Face, which metric you need to use, but most common, the kind of go-to is cosine. All right, cool, so we initialize that. Okay, cool, so that initialized, it does take a minute. For me, it was like a, a minute right now. And then we want to connect to the index. So we do Pangone index, index name, and then we can describe that index as well, just to see what is in there at the moment, which should for now be nothing. Okay, cool, now, with the index ready and the embedding ready, we're ready to begin populating our database. Okay, so just like a typical traditional database uh, with a vector database, you need to put things in there in order to you know, retrieve things from that database later on. So that's what we're going to do now. So we're gonna come down to here. I quickly just pulled this together. It's essentially a small data set. I think it's just around 5,000 items in there. And it just contains chunks of text from the Llama 2 paper and a few other related papers. So um, I, I just built that by kind of going through the Llama 2 paper and extracting the references and extracting those papers as well. I'm just kind of like repeating that loop a few times. All right, so once we download that, we come down to here, we're gonna convert that hugging face data set. So this is using hugging face data sets. We're gonna convert that into a pandas data frame. And we're specifying here that we would like to upload everything in batches of 32. We could, honestly, we could definitely increase that 
but it like to like a hundred or so but it doesn't really matter because it's not a big data set it's not going to take long to push everything to pinecone so let's just have a look at this loop we're going through in these batches of 32 we are getting our batch from the data frame we're getting ids first then we get the chunks of text from the data frame and then we get our metadata from the data frame so maybe what would actually be helpful here is if i just show you what's in that data frame so data.head okay so you can see here we just have we have chunk id so i'm going to use i think i use doi and chunk id to create the id for each entry yeah and then we have the chunk which is just like the chunk of text okay you can kind of see that here we have the paper ids uh, the title of the paper some summaries the source several other things in there okay but we don't need all of that so for the metadata we actually just keep the text the source and the title and yeah we can run that it should be pretty quick okay so that took 30 seconds for me you can also i kind of forgot to do this but you can do from tqdm auto import tqdm and you can add like a progress bar so that you can actually see the progress like that okay so that's just a little bit nicer if you would rather not just be staring at a, a cell doing something okay cool so now if we describe index stats we should see about 5,000 vectors in there okay so it's pretty cool now what we want to do so we have our index like the database ready what we want to do now is we want to add in the LM, so we want to add in Llama 2. To do that, we're going to be using the text generation pipeline from Hugging Face, and then we're going to be loading that into Langchain. Uh, we're going to be using the Llama 2 13B chat model, which you can see here, and the everything that comes with that. I've explained this stuff here, so like how to load the model the quantization everything else several times so i'm not going to go through that again uh, if you do want to go through that it's in a video that i linked earlier the previous llama 2 video but what i will do is show you how to get this hugging face authentication token so for that we go to huggingface.co we want to go to your profile icon at the top here settings and then you go to access tokens you would have to create a new token here. I've already created mine. Just make it a read token. You can use write if you want, but it just gives more permissions that you don't need for this. But I've created mine here. I'm just gonna copy it. And I will put it into this string here. And we run that. That's just gonna load everything. So we need that authentication token because Llama 2, all those models, you need permission to use them. You get that by signing up through Meta's forms and everything, as I mentioned earlier. So you need to, in this case, which you don't for every model on Hugging Face, but for this model, you do need to authenticate yourself. Okay, so that will take a moment to load. Just note here, I'm using a GPU and, and then I am switching the model to like evaluation mode. And actually, sorry, we don't need to use that GPU code here because the device actually figures it out by itself. But it's good to make sure that we actually are using uh, CUDA. So that would just print out down here. It should print out something like model loaded on CUDA zero. So this will take a moment to load. So I'll just skip ahead to when it's ready. Okay, so that has finished loading. It took eight minutes and we can see that the GPU memory has gotten up to 8.2 gigabytes so it is using more now uh, considering also that that 1.2 gigabytes of that was used by the mini lm model we're using like 7 gigabytes for this quantized version of the model which is pretty cool now i'm slowing the tokenizer the pipeline again i went through all this stuff before so i'm not going to go through it again and then what we do is just initialize that in line chain so now we can start using all the different line chain uh, utilities so come down to here what we need to do is initialize the retrieval qa chain so this is like the simplest form of reg that you can get in for your llms so for that for retrieval qa chain we need a vector store which is like another 
line chain object and our LLM, which we already have. So let's initialize our vector saw. And we just confirm that it works. So we have this query. I'm going to do a similar search. So this is not using the LLM at all here. This is just retrieving what it believes are relevant documents. Now, it's kind of hard to read these, to be honest. I, I, I at least struggle. But we'll see in a moment that the LLM does actually manage to get good information from these. So we create our reg pipeline, like so. So we just pass in our LLM, our retriever. And the chain type, chain type basically just means it's gonna stuff all of the context into the context window of the LLM query. And then we can begin asking questions. So let's begin by asking what is so special about Llama 2? We run that. This will take, again, we're using like the smallest GPU possible here. So it's gonna take a little bit of time. Also the quantization step that we use to make this model so small adds time to the processing or inference speeds. So we do have to wait a moment. Okay, and we get our response. It took like a minute. Again, if you actually want to run this uh, in production, you're probably gonna want more uh, GPU power and also not to quantize the model. So yeah, we get this. It's talking about actual llamas. It just tells us a load of random things like their coats can be a variety of colors. They are silky, I think it says somewhere. No, it did in the previous output. They're calm, so on and so on. We don't need that. So what we actually want to ask about is Llama 2, the large language model. So now what we're going to do is run it through our reg pipeline and see what we get. Okay, so that was 30 seconds to run. I think maybe the first time that you run the model, it's a little bit slower, but yeah, that was quicker. So we get Llama 2 is a collection of pre-trained fine-tuned large language models. Additionally, they are considered a suitable substitute for closed source models like ChatGPT, Bard, and Cloud. They are optimized for dialogue and outperform open source chat models on most benchmarks tested, which I think is the special thing about Llama 2. Cool. Now let's try some more questions. I'll see if that RAG example uh, works a lot better. So what safety measures we use in the development of Llama 2? Just using the LLM without retrieval augmentation, we get this. So it just, I don't even know what it's talking about. It kind of just, it's almost like it's rambling about something. I'm not sure what that something is, but yeah, not, not a good answer. Now, if we look at what we get with retrieval augmentation, we get the development of Llama 2 included safety measures such as pre-training, fire tuning, and model safety approaches. The release of the 34 billion parameter model was delayed because they didn't have time to red team. That's a pretty good answer. But let's ask a little more about the red teaming procedures. I'm not going to bother asking the LLM because it clearly isn't capable of giving us good answers here. So let's just go straight for the retrieval augmented pipeline. So we asked what are the red teaming procedures for Llama 2 and it Describes, okay, red team procedures use Llama 2, included creating prompts that might elicit unsafe or undesirable responses from the model, such as sensitive topics or prompts that could cause harm if the model was spawned inappropriately. These exercises were performed by a set of experts, and it also notes that the paper mentions that multiple additional rounds of red team were performed over several months to ensure the robustness of the model. Cool. Now let's ask one more final question. How does the performance of Llama 2 compare to other local LLMs? The performance of Llama 2 is compared to other local LLMs such as Chinchilla and Bard in the paper, although I wouldn't call Bard a local LLM. Fine. Specifically, the authors report that Llama 2 outperforms these other models on the series of helpfulness and safety benchmarks that they tested. Llama 2 appears to be on par with some of the closed source models at least on the human valuations they performed. So that would be models like GPT 3.5, which is seems a little bit better than Llama 2, but not by that much, uh, except from on coding stuff. Coding stuff, Llama 2 is pretty terrible. So everything else, it seems pretty good. Now, yeah, that, that's the example. So we can see very clearly that retrieval augmentation works a lot better than without retrieval augmentation. 
that's why this sort of technique is super powerful. It means you can, your LLM can answer questions about more up-to-date topics, which it can't otherwise. It means it can answer questions about, like if you have, maybe you work in an organization, you have internal documents, it means it can answer questions about that. So overall, with your augmentation, in most cases is really useful. Now, that's it for this video. I hope this has been useful and interesting. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.